Zechariah 9, verse 10, here it is. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. So Ephraim and Jerusalem are God's own people. And it's basically a good thing, isn't it, to be able to defend your nation, have, have big armies to defend your own nation? Well, yes. But here Zechariah looks to the future, and he's shown a time in which there is no, uh, no need for armies. There's no need for bows and arrows. There's no need for swords and weaponry. There's a time of peace coming. God is preparing a time of peace. And in this vision, this is what he's shown, this, this picture on this line. The Bible envisions a picture of the future without war, without weapons. It envisions a future where there's peace, peace on every side. Not a boring future, a population of selfless, cheerful, fulfilled, intellectually growing like we've never grown before, a group of people who are loving and kind to each other and are reaching new heights, new intellectual heights, new heights of, of everything, new heights of feeling, new heights of, of understanding, new heights of, of moral appreciation day by day throughout eternity in communion and companionship with each other. So Zakaria has shown a picture of peace. He's shown a vision of the future in which people are living in selfless harmony with each other. And how do you portray that? How would God portray that? Well, he portrays, you know, each oracle, each vision is kind of its own thing. Here's a picture he's shown where humans live together without war, without conflict. And yet it doesn't mean they're all sleeping. Uh, well, we're all getting along in the most wonderful way. And so this is a picture that is put in front of us of the ultimate prosperity of God's people. Everybody who wants this can be joined in, joined in with what God is doing. But it's going to cost us something. We can't bring along our old selfish, uh, it's about me kind of approach to things as we go through our lives. We, that's not going to work in the new world. So we want to allow God to make the changes, changes in our character, changes in our heart, so that we will be more like Jesus. You know, it sounds like a platitude, and yet it is really the hope, the hope we have of a beautiful future. It's interesting to me how many people fear the future. They fear, you know, what's it going to be like if we're in the kingdom? If the Christian thing is really real, if it's really true, then people are afraid of that. But you know what? God will never take away our free will. He gave it to us. That's part and parcel of what being a human means. And so why would he take it away? No, we're going to live in eternity without uh, ever giving out or giving away our free will. And yet we will never choose to rebel against him. It's a beautiful picture. Uh, God will bring us up to full dignity. And we'll be so glad he did. So just imagine that picture. Free for eternity. You have liberty for eternity. You get to make your own decisions. They'll all be, you'll choose all the right decisions, not because you're forced, but because you want to. And you're going to have all the benefits of the full human intellect. They say we use, what, 1 or 2%? In eternity, what will we use? And what will the limits be? Perhaps limitless. This life's our opportunity. We have opportunity to develop our character, to learn to trust him. And it's going to be a pretty good payoff all through eternity. So let's learn the patience now. Let's learn self-control now. And let's let Jesus be our Lord and King right now. There's a beautiful, sinless world coming. And you and I are asked, suggested, called, invited to be part of it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm.